fellow Jamaicans, the Prime Minister this morning announced the declaration of another round of states of emergency as we roll into the festive Christmas season. There was no consultation with the opposition prior to this decision being made. No briefing as to the specific security issues which are being relied on as justification for another round of SOEs. This clearly shows once again that the government has no regard for the opposition. Mr. Holness prefers to be wrong and strong, pressing on with his SOE policy. His behaviour indicates that he really does not want our support, no doubt believing that it is to his political advantage for the opposition and the government to be continuing at odds over this issue. We do not see the use of states of emergency as a policing tool as being a sustainable path forward for Jamaica, putting the majority of Jamaicans at legal risk of being detained for extended periods by police or soldiers without charge is no way to address Jamaica's long-standing challenging problem of criminal violence. Many lives of lawful young Jamaicans have been disrupted and irreparably damaged by being held in detention without charge for long periods, sometimes when in excess of a year, with a loss of their jobs and the stigma of being treated like common criminals. States of emergency are just about detention. But detention is not a sustainable strategy for reducing violent crime. Detention does not involve proper police work. There's no investigation, no case preparation, no effective prosecution and conviction in a court of law. States of emergency therefore encourage sloppy law enforcement practices because anyone can be held and kept in custody without the police having to bring a case to court to hold the criminals accountable and make them pay for their wrongdoings. We do not believe that this repeated use of the state of emergency is lawful. It subverts the basic scheme of our constitution by allowing the government to suspend the basic rights of the people in circumstances where it is not clearly justified by an immediate threat to our democratic system of government. The logic of this government's approach would keep much of Jamaica under states of emergency for years and years with no strategy to get to the real problem and get it under control in a sustainable way. People are now fed up of wasting time in long lines of traffic at checkpoints. After two years of COVID, people are looking forward to enjoying their Christmas season and making some money from parties, shows and other entertainment. People are angry to know that this will be disrupted by states of emergency. People are not comfortable to know that they are at risk of being detained without charge during the states of emergency if they do not comply with whatever they are told by the security forces. We also have issues with the state of emergency regulations as modified this year because they are excessive and easily abused. For example, the regulations make it a criminal offence punishable by months of imprisonment if you do not answer any questions a police officer or soldier may put to you in a state of emergency area. The regulations make it a criminal offence, again punishable by months of imprisonment, if you use abusive language in a state of emergency area. The regulations make it a criminal offence, punishable by months of imprisonment, if a spouse, husband or wife, a parent or a child do not inform a police officer or soldier of any breach of the state of emergency regulations by their own loved ones. The regulations allow photographs, descriptions, measurements and fingerprints under the Fingerprints Act and the DNA Evidence Act to be taken from anyone who has been detained without charge under a state of emergency and there is no provision for that person's basic biometric information to be destroyed in the event that he is subsequently released without charge. These are laws more like a fascist dictatorship than a proud democracy which respects the basic rights and freedoms of our people. The People's National Party is of the view that a strong security presence should be maintained in communities that are facing high levels of violence. The use of soldiers and police in this way is permitted by our normal laws. It does not require a state of emergency. If it is desired to give soldiers powers to act independently of the police, then zones of special operations can be declared in troubled areas across Jamaica 
as that legislation does give soldiers the same powers of police in Zoso areas. The police have indicated that the main problem they are trying to address is the 300 or so very violent gunmen who create mayhem in our country. The state of emergency takes away the rights of a majority of Jamaicans, well over a million people, when the target is those 300. That is no crime plan. That is the approach of a fascist dictatorship. I have suggested a court-supervised procedure to allow these known violence producers, the 300 plus of them on whom the police have credible intelligence, to be detained for a period of time to take them off the streets and out of their communities while a case is built against them that can sustain a criminal charge. I have suggested seven days initial detention, backed by a court order, and further 14-day periods if the court is satisfied that a case is being built towards bringing a charge. The detained person should have the right to apply to the court for release if he can satisfy the court that he poses no credible risk of violence against others. And after 49 days of court-supervised detention, the person must either be charged or released. If charged, he can be remanded in custody in the normal way and made to face justice. This mechanism balances the rights of the individual with the rights of the community by ensuring due process to the individual while also recognizing the need for law enforcement to have a mechanism that will allow cases to be built against persons who are inclined to intimidate and even kill witnesses. This mechanism must also be supported by additional resources to strengthen the intelligence gathering capacity of the police, especially in communities, and to expand the witness protection program. More must also be done to prevent these persons when in custody from being able to communicate with their cronies and run things from jail. My fellow Jamaicans, there is no good reason to support this government's abusive use of the state of emergency procedure. It is not a solution to our problems. It has not achieved a reduction of murders over the past five years, despite being used over 10 times during that period. And Jamaica continues to have one of the highest murder rates in the world. It puts us all at risk by normalizing the misuse of the most extreme powers under the Constitution that exist to protect our democracy from subversion, not to undermine the rights and freedoms of our people. It is our sworn duty as parliamentarians to uphold and defend the Constitution. I have been consistent that I will not fail in that solemn duty. The government is intent on going down its own road on this in another direction. That is not good for Jamaica. If asked, I'm willing to assist the government to develop a sustainable solution that does not involve the abuse of the Constitution. We have put our cards on the table and we're willing to play our part. God bless Jamaica land we love.